Field Marshal Erwin Rommel known as the Desert Fox, was one of the most enigmatic and respected military figures of World War II. He showed remarkable leadership skills, even in the early years of his career in the German Army. He led the audacious 7th Panzer Division victory in France, where it would earn the nickname of the Ghost Division. But it was his exploits with the German Army group known as the Africa Corps in North Africa, where he would earn his nickname the Desert Fox. What made him an outstanding general? And how did he meet his tragic demise? This is Erwin Rommel. Erwin Rommel was born in Heidenheim, Germany on November 15, 1891. His fascination with the military began at a young age, inspired by stories of his father's service in the Franco-Prussian War. He joined the Imperial German Army in 1910, eventually fighting in World War I as a second lieutenant. His tactical brilliance was exemplified in the Battle of Caporetto in 1917, where he used infiltration tactics to take advantage of the terrain against a larger Italian force. Capturing 81 guns and 9,000 men in this battle, and capturing an entire Italian division in Lang Rhone. These actions earned him the Poor Le Marit, the highest military honor in Imperial Germany. His leadership style meant that he was always led from the front, and was in the thick of the action, becoming wounded several times. For his efforts, he was promoted to captain by the time that the Great War ended. Captain Rommel stayed in the army after the war, where he held various positions and served as an instructor. He published a book called Infanterie Greifton, or Infantry Attacks, in 1937, which was a bestseller, which no doubt contributed to him being noticed by Hitler. Just before the outbreak of World War II, he would be assigned to the War Academy in Wiener Neustadt, Austria. He was promoted to Major General, and Hitler requested that he was given command of his personal bodyguard. But this was only the start of his rise. In February 1940, he was given command of the legendary 7th Panzer Division, whose exploits would be known as the Ghost Division. They penetrated Allied lines and advanced so quickly without infantry support, that they became difficult to track, even for the German High Command. He repeatedly caught his French and British opponents unprepared, quickly proving his talent for commanding mechanized formations. After the French campaign, Hitler was alarmed that his Italian allies were being given a sound beating by the British in North Africa. He decided to intervene and made Rommel the commander of the Africa Corps, who earned a promotion to lieutenant general along the way. This campaign would cement his nickname as the Desert Fox, and was the closest thing to a gentleman's war. He repeatedly duped and outmaneuvered the British, always leading his men from the front. This inspired his men, and he was known for his swift and aggressive attacks, always looking for ways to surprise and attack his opponents. He was formidable in defense, and on at least one occasion he himself would point out the targets for his anti-tank guns. His audacious and bold actions allowed him to be portrayed as a hero to the German public. However, the Germans had significant logistical problems in North Africa, which was made worse by the British control of Malta. Despite the difficult logistical situation, Rommel launched assaults that pushed the British army back across Cyrenaica and into Egypt. He surrounded the port city of Tobruk in 1941, but could not capture it. Thanks in part to the stubborn defense by the Australians and other Commonwealth defenders, known as the Rats of Tobruk. Rommel struck the British again and pushed them back during Operation Battleaxe, and this time, captured Tobruk within 48 hours. This achievement earned Rommel the rank of Field Marshal. Following the German thrust into Egypt, Lt. Gen. Bernard Montgomery was chosen to lead the British forces in Egypt, and he became Rommel's main adversary in the desert. The advance of the Africa Corps was halted in the Second Battle of El Alamein, thanks to overwhelming British forces. After this battle, Rommel's forces were steadily pushed back until he was recalled back to Europe in 1943, when the war in North Africa was lost. Rommel was then reassigned and put in command of Army Group B to reinforce the Atlantic Wall against the anticipated Allied invasion. He said that the only way to resist the invasion was to stop the Allies at the beaches, where they were most vulnerable, and throw them back into the sea. On D-Day, his troops defended their sectors well against the Normandy landings, despite overwhelming odds. However, Hitler denied him permission to deploy his tanks on the beaches, and was instead ordered to hold his armor back for a counterattack. As the war progressed, Rommel became increasingly disillusioned with Hitler, and wanted to negotiate a peace with the Allies. He was not alone. Certain officers suggested to him that he could take over as leader if Hitler was overthrown, however he was unaware that they were attempting an assassination. 
About a month after the Allied landings in Normandy, Rommel's staff car was attacked by a British fighter on July 17, 1944, which landed him in hospital. Three days later, on 20th of July, an attempted assassination of Hitler failed, and during the investigations of the conspirators, Rommel's name came up. Hitler had to have Rommel executed, but did not want to put the popular general on a public trial. So, while he was on sick leave, two generals from Hitler's headquarters visited him and offered him a choice. He could either defend himself against the charge of high treason, with his family certain to face retribution, or he could commit suicide, and his family would be safe and paid their full pensions, and the government could claim that he died of his wounds, a national hero, and be buried with full military honors. Rommel chose the latter, sparing his family unnecessary suffering. He was given a state funeral, with the government claiming that he had died of his wounds. Rommel's conduct on the battlefield ensured that he was admired by his men, respected by his enemies, and enshrined his reputation as one of Germany's most brilliant military commanders.